Hey, big news, Shota Imanaga spoken for first move of the offseason for the Cubs and the details of the contract. We were kind of going over it uh, before the show. Interesting to say the least, explain. Yes, Lauren, uh, good morning. Shota Imanaga and the Cubs, they are in agreement on a multi-year contract the details of which are very interesting indeed. Our John Heyman reporting that with the deal being about $15 million per year, there are also some escalators and options that could continue the contract to a, a maximum value around $80 million. But what we do know is that it is a multi-year deal with the initial AAV of $15 million. The physical, we are told, happening today, so we could have a formal announcement sometime by the end of business or this evening. Of course, very importantly, and Maddie referenced this earlier, the deadline is tomorrow, which is why I think it was wise for Imanaga and his representatives to make sure there was an agreement in place now, that way that the medical information can get worked out. If there's some kind of issue that comes up there, there's still time to, to rework the deal and, and think about ways to make sure that you cross the finish line before 5 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. So that is the, the really important thing. As, as you talked about earlier, Lauren, uh, one of the great things about baseball, nicknames. And while Big Dumper, that was news to Maddie, I've got one big time. I've got one big time nickname for Shota Imanaga, <laughs> okay. the throwing philosopher. The throwing philosopher. Okay. So it, I would say, Lauren, that in general, it's been a very robust winter for great nicknames arriving to MLB. About Harold time. is still talking about the grandson of the wind. So we've got the grandson of the wind, the throwing philosopher. We have entered an entirely new realm of Major League Baseball nicknames. And the Pope, who I'm talking to. I'm talking to you. They're all depressing. <laughs> it's not depressing. You your nickname was Pope. Uh, what's next for Chicago, JP? Because even when we were talking about the potential of Cody Bellinger there, we said they have to add more after that. They, they can't be done. Correct. I think, Lauren, that a couple of things stand out with the Chicago Cubs. Number one, how about the bullpen? And one name that I believe we haven't talked about enough this offseason, how about Josh Hader, who, of course, pitched for Craig Council with the Milwaukee Brewers. And if Hader's market in terms of the term, the length of contract, is not quite what he expected when the offseason began, why not go to Chicago if it ends up being a shorter term deal with the high AAV, perhaps go there, put up some huge numbers and then re-enter the marketplace later on. That's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, as you see their potential rotation options now that Imanaga has joined, we do believe that whether it's Assad or Wicks, we may see some of these guys involved in the bullpen too to add in more depth around Advert Azulay later on in the ballgame. But I also think the Cubs are certainly interested in bats. And whether it's Justin Turner, whether it's Reese Hoskins, perhaps even a trade for Randy or Rosarena, more on him later on in the show. I, I do think there is enough interest there and, and capacity for the Cubs to add a big bat as well. And of course, we haven't even talked about the rest of the starting pitching market. And, and we talked earlier, maybe we'll see Marcus Stroman uh, getting closer. I was told today, perhaps he will end up going to the New York Yankees. Uh, I would also draw your attention to the left-hand side of the screen, Jordan Montgomery, Blake Snell, two major names still out there. We do expect Clayton Kershaw when he's healthy. Perhaps he'll go back to the Los Angeles Dodgers. That is the very strong sense around the industry that will happen eventually. A question more of when and not if. But those two big time names, we've got a reigning Cy Young Award winner in Blake Snell still available on the 10th of January. That does not happen every year. And so uh, with Stroman, it appears heavy dialogue there with the New York Yankees. Perhaps once Stroman goes there, Imanaga to the Cubs, that will solidify where Montgomery and Snell mm, could go next. 43 days before pitchers and catchers, if my math is correct, Harvard grad. Hey, we were on the air no less than three minutes in our first show, and Matt was talking about Justin Turner. He said, I can't wait to see where he signs. I think it's the story, right, from, from non-tendered and DFA to, to October legend. Where does one of the best humans in the game end up? He really is, Lauren, and, and Justin Turner is someone who, for every clubhouse that he is in, his experience and knowledge is valued greatly. I mentioned the Cubs. That's a team that, in a very competitive division, that they can certainly win. The Reds are getting better. You look at the Cubs and you consider where Turner could play 
and impact your ball club as a first, as a third, as a DH. He has that ability to, to be a tremendous influence in the clubhouse and certainly on the field. I would also mention this. As you look around the industry, Matt Chapman is still unsigned. And two teams that are involved in the Chapman market, the Blue Jays and the Giants, both of them are potential fits for Justin Turner, depending on how things play out with the Matt Chapman market. So I think those are three teams I'm watching carefully right now with Justin Turner. Cubs, Blue Jays, and Giants. Even with those deep roots with the Los Angeles Dodgers, Lauren, the best fit might be with the Dodgers forever rivals, the San Francisco Imagine that. We were interviewing him at spring training when he was with Boston. We were 15 to 20 minutes late for his interview, and he sat on the grass and waited for us with a smile on his face. 15 that to 20 minutes. Drives. Justin Turner. No, I mean, he just didn't have to wait. He could have been like, oh, I got, you know, I got work. That's out. a long time to wait. I know. I thought the same thing. Harold, I can't believe you're listening. Why are you so late? Harold's listening. <laughs> I never thought so. Stop. Hey, what? what? I said you're shocked. I'm shocked completely. Hey, Jorge Soler, JP, before we go, spent the last two seasons in Miami, yet we're hearing Miami is not in on him. So who's next? Right, Lauren, that was the report yesterday on Jorge Soler, based on appearances, not going back to the Marlins. He told Jordano Carmona of Pelota Cubana that there has been no conversation with the Marlins this offseason, which I think caught some people by surprise. He had a very impactful year with the Marlins this past season. I would mention a lot of these same teams that are looking for bats, including the Toronto Blue Jays. I know Sportsnet.ca has reported a bit on that potential link. 36 home runs. That's a big deal right now. And, and I think that you consider where Soler could fit. Those teams that have a DH spot open or, or a rotation potentially. I would also mention the Giants, a team that will be looking for offense too. So even though he's not going back to the Marlins, I do believe Lauren, a healthy market right now for Jorge Soler. Mm -hmm. Ten years into his big league career, this profession keeps you guessing, doesn't it, J.P. Morosi? The shredder doesn't like you, but I do. Thanks for the time. Thank you, Lauren. I appreciate that. Maddie. We do too.